everyone. I'm here at the wildcat enclosure, or I should say one of our wildcat enclosures here at Wildwood. So, first of all, if you've been to Wildwood, you might know that, well, cats, not always predictable creatures, so you might not get so lucky to see them. So lucky for you, you're watching a video right now that will have actual footage of our wildcats. Um, second of all, when you see a wildcat, most of the times people say to me, well, hang on a second, that just looks like it's a brown tabby. You could not be more wrong, okay? On the outside, they don't look too different from house cats, but on the inside, they're completely different. So a bit of a history lesson, first of all. Our house cats, our domesticated cats, are originally descended from Northern African wildcats. The kind of wildcat we have at Wildwood is a Scottish wildcat. The closest relative is a European wildcat. So, genetically speaking, they are two totally different animals. However, they are not so different that they can't interbreed. Sometimes you might see a wildcat and domestic cat hybrid, and in that case it would be really hard to tell them apart. But there are some clues to tell you whether it is a true wildcat. First of all, you need to take a look at the shape of its body. It looks a little bit like a house cat that's just got a really big cross forehead, and that's because its head structure is slightly different than a regular house cat, and its musculature is such that it is a lot tougher and more muscular than a regular house cat, so it might look a little bit bigger as well. Taking a look at the tail of a wild cat, you'll notice it doesn't taper off to a fine point, but rather it ends at a blunt point with black fur on the end, and that's always the case. Looking at the markings across its body, you'll notice it has a dorsal stripe. What that means is it's a stripe of black fur in this case all the way down its backbone. Um, and then along its sides, it's got lovely straight unbroken stripes. So for this reason, it is sometimes known as the Tiger of Scotland. Um, finally, you might notice that the muzzle of a wild cat looks like it's white, but actually it's cream. A true wild cat, a pure wild cat, doesn't have any white fur anywhere on it. And the reason for this is that white fur is uh, genetically dominant to other cat coat colors. Um, so wild cats originally did not have any genes for white fur in their gene pool. And if they have interbred with a feral cat, so that's a domestic house cat that doesn't have a home, if they've interbred with one, they might have picked up some of those white fur genes. So the fur around a wild cat's muzzle is cream. Now, now that we've talked about the differences physiologically between a wild cat and a domestic cat, why are they so important? Well, first of all, they are, depending on who you ask, either the most endangered or one of the most endangered animals in Britain. And that's because, based on our estimates, in the wild there are less than a hundred wild cats today. They used to cover all of Britain, but as their range got shorter and smaller, and as humans exterminated them, unfortunately they became constricted just to the Scottish Highlands, which is why they're also known as the Scottish wild cat today. Here in Kent, wild cats haven't lived here for at least 500 years. We'll have to fact check that one. I think it's 500 years. Um, <laughs> however, they are really important small predators. So they are predators. Now I'm pretty sure if I asked you at home, what do you think a wildcat is going to catch? You're going to tell me songbirds and you're going to tell me mice. And absolutely it is capable of catching those things, but usually its prey is just a little bit bigger. Um, its main source of food is rabbits, believe it or not. Um, and it does actually catch a fair few of those in the wild. As with anything in a food chain, it's important to have every link in the chain. So, the lack of wildcats in the wild means that now we have a surplus of rabbits. Um, second of all, it is the only remaining wildcat in Great Britain today. We no longer have lynx in the wild, so this is the only remaining wild feline that we do have. So at Wildwood, what we're doing is we're breeding wildcats. Um, in fact, we believe that the ones that we have at Wildwood in captivity are more genetically pure than the ones that are found in the wild today. Um, one of the reasons that we're breeding them is because 
one of the ways that you preserve a species that is endangered and about to go extinct is that you breed it in captivity so you can maintain some genetic diversity. So we're not the only ones breeding them. We are collaborating with a lot of other partners, including Highland Wildlife Park, to breed our wildcats in captivity. We swap individuals so that um, they aren't breeding with any wildcat that is too closely related to them. And when we do that, we're able to have continued litters of wildcat kittens that are hopefully genetically diverse. And that's because we're hoping at some point in the future to do a wildcat reintroduction project. So what that would look like is, it would be a captive breeding project where animals are bred in captivity but away from humans and in such a way that they don't get used to humans as being a source of food or a friendly face. And then um, once the kittens are at an age where they leave their parents naturally, they would be relocated somewhere in the wild. Now this is all very speculative, it's at some point in the future, but in the meantime, it's important that we maintain a viable genetic population of wild cats for breeding here in captivity. So that's why we've got not one, not two, but five different wildcat enclosures here at Wildwood. And we have a breeding stock of about six animals right now. In fact, last year we had wildcat kittens born for the first time in quite a few years at Wildwood. And if you've already, if you haven't seen our videos, do go back on our social media and find them from last summer because they're absolutely adorable creatures. Oh, there's someone beside me. No, I wish. Okay, so um, going back to a little bit more about the wildcat. In the wild, they're solitary creatures. Um, so after they leave their mum, they will be living on their own. They'll pair up with a mate at around December, January time of year, just for mating. And then mum will go off and she'll have her kittens. Uh, mother wildcat can have up to eight kittens in a litter. Now that's one busy mummy, but actually usually she's only having an average of about four at a time. She has her kittens in late spring. And then by the time it's late summer, they're all grown up. So like a lot of other wild animals, they grow up really, really quickly. Um, to be a wildcat kitten, when you're born, you're helpless. Your eyes are closed, your ears are closed, you're relying really only on your sense of smell. So you'll notice if you have seen the wildcats moving around in our footage that they're very quiet. And that's because there's quite small predators. They're still at risk of being preyed upon by larger animals, such as wolves, lynx, or even an eagle owl could swoop down and grab a wildcat kitten. So in the wild, a wildcat mom is very fearful of someone taking her kittens. So she will be trying to hide them as much as possible. Wildcats normally live in the edges of woodlands where woodlands turn into meadows. So the habitat behind me is a really good example of what they'd normally be living with. Um, that means that mom would try to find a turned over tree somewhere she could almost hide away her kittens. She wouldn't dig a burrow, but she would certainly find a sheltered area where predators wouldn't be likely to see her kittens. So for the first 10 or so days of their lives, they're quite helpless and they're relying on mum for everything, including milk and going to the toilet. But then their eyes start to open and their ears start to open and they communicate primarily through body language. They don't make a lot of noise because any noise they make might draw a predator towards them. And eventually mom has to wean her kittens off of milk. So remember, she's doing this all on her own. She's going out, she's hunting, she's bringing back rabbits and she's teaching her kittens about the taste of meat. And then she's going to bring back injured prey. So for example, she might catch a mouse and make sure that it's quite injured. So her kittens learn how to hunt and then she'll bring back live prey to teach them how to hunt properly. And by the end of summer, they disperse on their own and then they go off to find their own territories and start their own families. And this is what we'd like to see happen in the future in the wild. But in the meantime, do enjoy our videos of wildcat kittens here at Wildwood.